If you've ever gone to buy an ethernet cable for any reason, you may have noticed that there are several different types to choose from. Some of them may say Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, Cat6a, but what do all of these mean and does it really make a difference which one you get? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So you can know what's worth buying and potentially save some money. And also I'm going to go over a real world test to see how much of a difference it makes in your own home internet. So first of all, what the heck does the cat ratings mean anyway? Well, for ethernet cables, that stands for category and the different numbers represent different standards and specifications for each type of cable. So you can think of them like different versions. Now, the good news is that all of these cables will typically work since the new versions are all backwards compatible. They all use the same RJ45 connector, often just called the ethernet port, but the difference in the different ones are the rated performance of each. So let's go over all the different types of ethernet cables you may come across from Cat5 all the way through Cat7 and beyond. The first type is really common, which you probably already heard of, it's called Cat5. However, these days when someone says Cat5, they're probably referring to the newer version of Cat5e, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves with that. Now, a true Cat5 cable is actually obsolete and you probably can't even buy them anymore. A Cat5 cable is only rated for up to 100 megabits per second at 100 meter maximum length, and that's with a 100 megahertz bandwidth. So obviously only being rated for 100 megabits, you're almost never gonna see these anymore because usually one gigabit is kind of the minimum. And if you're still using one, you should definitely replace it because in addition to having a slower speed, it also might be less reliable than the new types we're gonna talk about in a second. And this brings us to Cat5e, which I just mentioned. And the Cat5e stands for Category 5 Enhanced. So Cat5e is very common these days and it's rated for one gigabit speeds at 100 meters as opposed to the original one, it's just 100 megabit. And again, this has a bandwidth of 100 megahertz. And this is due to the improved specs regarding twisting of the wire pairs inside, shielding and other improvements which reduce crosstalk or the interference of the different signals which would reduce the speed. Also, a regular Cat5 cable only required two twisted pairs of wires inside, while Cat5e uses four. So obviously it can transfer more data. A Cat5 cable may have had four, but it only required two. So an important thing to note is that the rating certifications are for the bare minimum specs. So it's very possible that a cable will be capable of much more than what it's rated for. So for example, a Cat5 cable might actually be capable of close to gigabit speeds if it's a really high quality premium cable, even though it's older. And the same will go for all of these other types. It's just the rating is basically a guarantee. After Cat5e came category six, which bumped the spec from one gigabit to 10 gigabit at 55 meter length and with a bandwidth of 250 megahertz up from 100. And by the way, the bandwidth refers to the range of frequencies that the cable is able to reliably use, which explains why it would improve the speed. It's got more space to fit the data in a way. And Cat6 further reduces crosstalk. That's kind of the main way to improve the speed in addition to the bandwidth using tighter wound wire pairs and may also use things like a plastic core through the middle of the cable to better separate the internal wires and things like that. I would say Cat6 is a good choice if you're really not sure what type of cable you're gonna need, since it probably won't be that much more expensive depending on where you buy it, and it will future-proof your cable for a while. You'll probably be able to use it for the near future. But this is especially important if the wire can't easily be replaced. Like if you're wiring a house, for example, where it would just be in the walls forever, I would definitely get at least Cat6, probably even one of the higher rated ones we're about to talk about. But if you're just buying a general purpose ethernet cable for your laptop or something, Cat5e would definitely be fine as well, since I doubt any of your devices right now are gonna be capable of 10 gig anyway. So Cat5e, Cat5.6, whatever you want. So by now you might be thinking, okay, surely Cat6 is pretty much the best I mean, why would you need anything more than 10 gigabit, right? Well, you might be right, but we're not gonna stop there. What fun would that be? Because there's also Cat6a, and this one is also capable of 10 gigabit, but at a longer maximum distance of 100 meters instead of 55, 
and it has a larger 500 megahertz bandwidth. So if you are actually creating a 10 gig network, CAD 6A will be more reliable at getting your full speed since again, it's got further improved specs for reducing that crosstalk. It's just gonna be more reliable. And now finally, the big daddy of ethernet cables, for now at least, is category seven. As far as I could tell, this is the fastest type you can buy at the moment. There's other cables that like claim to be category eight, but I don't think they truly are. CAT7 is also rated for 10 gigabit speeds, but with a higher bandwidth of 600 megahertz, even larger than the 500, and it's got the strictest specifications for reducing crosstalk, such as requiring shielding between individual wire pairs in the cable, as well as for the whole cable itself. This seems to be all about improving reliability, not necessarily the speed, since it doesn't actually improve anything above 10 gigabit, even though it probably is capable of higher speeds if you had a switch that was capable of faster than 10 gigabit on that side. So I think CAT7 might be best suited for extreme future-proofing permanent wire installations for people who are not just satisfied with the best, but rather want the completely unnecessary. So if you're wiring a house and you just wanna go all out, get CAT7. All right, so we've learned that there are tons of different ethernet cables you can use, but does it even really matter? I wanted to find out, so I decided to do a quick real life test. I got three different cables, a CAT 5E, a CAT 6, and even a CAT 7, all the same five foot length. And I wanted to find out if it would make a difference when I used it with a gigabit internet connection, since that's really the fastest internet you're gonna get right now anyway. And yeah, I know I could have done a local gigabit test, but I wanted to do it this way. It's a little bit more practical, I think. So for this, I'm simply going to connect my laptop directly to the router using each cable. And to make sure there's no limiting factors, I have the router connected to the fiber optic intake with a CAT7 cable, so there's no limiting agent there. And just looking at the three cables I used here for the test, this is the CAT5E. It's definitely the thinnest, although it's not flimsy or anything. Then the black one is the CAT6, definitely a little bit thicker. And then of course the CAT7, there are some noticeable differences. It's very rigid. You can tell there's a lot more shielding in here and it's got a metal connector. So definitely way higher construction quality. So I went and did all that. And what was the difference? Well, none at all. As I pretty much expected with such a short distance at only five feet, all the cables were more than capable of handling the gigabit connection. I had also tested the upload speed, but it was very inconsistent even between tests of the same type of cable. So I just didn't consider that in this one. And then out of curiosity, I did a speed test on my desktop, which is plugged into the port in the wall. So in that test, I would guess it had maybe an extra 50 feet of CAT6 cable to deal with as opposed to the other control test. And the speed only dropped less than 10 megabits. So even with about 50 feet of CAT6, the loss was less than 1% of the speed. So really, it's not that big a deal. So the takeaway here is that unless you need to worry about future proofing your connection, it really doesn't matter what type of cable you buy. Perhaps if you have tons and tons of cables right next to each other, it's like really electronically noisy or something and you need that shielding, the improved shielding on the better categories might help you but in all other cases, it really shouldn't matter at all. Now, after looking at all this, you may be wondering, what's the point of all these other cables if you can't even really use them, if it doesn't make that big of a difference in most situations? Well, part of it is marketing, since it's easy to say you need the better cable with the higher number, which of course costs more, but there is networking hardware out there that is capable of 10 gig internet. It's usually commercial equipment though. However, we are starting to see some 10 gigabit consumer grade switches out there. For example, there's the new Asus XG-U2008 switch, which has two 10 gigabit ports. It's only about $250, much less than what you'd spend on an enterprise switch, along with eight regular gigabit ports. So you could hook up your computer and maybe a network storage device to the 10 gig port, then everything else would go into the regular gigabit ones. That way, even if none of the other devices on the network are capable of 10 gigabit, it would allow multiple one gigabit data transfers to multiple devices simultaneously. So the 10 gigabit NAS or storage server would be able to provide out that 10 gigabit and then it could kind of be leached off by as many devices as you want. Or of course, you could do a full 10 gigabit transfer 
between the two devices plugged in. So between the server and your computer if they're both plugged into that other port. In that sort of situation though, where you do have 10 gigabit capability, you would need CAT6 or higher, at least for those two 10 gigabit ports. And if it's over any kind of distance, CAT6A would be ideal because you're gonna get that better reliability. Even if it's not that big of a difference, you still may as well. But something tells me that not too many people are gonna be using 10 gigabit for a while. So I guess from all this, my takeaway is that even the old ethernet standards have held up surprisingly well. I mean, believe it or not, the RJ45 connector used in all of these ethernet cables was first standardized in 1987. At that time, the minimum spec was only three kilohertz bandwidth, and now it's getting into the gigahertz. So I think it's safe to say that the connector will probably be here for a while. It's not going anywhere anytime soon, since it seems like there's still a lot of room for expansion. We might even see 100 gigabit, who knows? So I think that is it. Hopefully you guys thought this video was pretty cool and interesting. I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments section. Are you still using old Cat5 cables you didn't really know about? It usually says it printed on the side if you're not sure. Or do you need that full 10 gig speed? I don't know. I myself kind of went crazy recently. I bought a bunch of Cat6 and Cat7 cables since I could never seem to find any ethernet cables when I needed them. So I'm like, may as well get the best. And I'm actually using the Cat7 cables to connect all the most important stuff in my network, like the router and the switches hooked up to it for maximum performance, just in case, you know, even if it doesn't make that big of a difference, I want to have the best and remove all doubt where it might matter. But anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. And if you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can click on these even if you're on a phone. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And also consider clicking the bell next to the subscribe button for notifications, or else YouTube might not even show you the new videos at all. So thanks again for watching, guys. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And as usual, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.